let's talk about where your life is now, kind of bring people up to speed and, and uh, what your life looks like and, and the role that Chiron plays in that life. Yeah, I mean, we're mostly, I guess, normal stuff. I don't really know whatever that looks like right now. That's probably not the best description, but we're, you know, we do work, we do school, we do vacations, we do all of the stuff that I think most people do. Um, we have a lot of work we do in addition to that. We do events, we do, uh, you know, awareness stuff for for Chiron. We're doing uh, all the child safety stuff through the foundation. Um, so we've got a lot of extra volunteering uh, that we do and uh, trying to keep pace with the investigation and all the other stuff going on. So it's still um, there, still a prominent piece in there. Uh, you know, we've got pictures of him up around the house and stuff still. We, you know, he's definitely still part of what we do and part of our consciousness on a daily basis. Um, but I, I, you know, I'd say we're, we do I, whatever normal is right now, we're doing that um, with, with just a lot of extra stuff. You know, we don't forget. We don't give up. Um, we talk about him, we still celebrate birthdays and, you know, do stuff for him at holidays and all that kind of stuff. So just a little extra, but it's, uh, I think it's a very positive influence on both of us. Uh, it definitely gives my daughter uh, a really good feeling that we're still actively looking and engaged and talking to people and asking for help. And it, I think for both of us, it gives us a lot of belief and hope. Uh, in a good way. So um, yeah, a lot of normal stuff, but a lot of extra <laughs> still wrapped around, um, you know, the day to day, week to week that we've got going on. Yeah. You mentioned your daughter who was really young when this happened. How have you kind of explained this to her over the years? Um, really, I've just taken an approach of trying to explain or answer questions to the best of my ability at the level that she can probably handle it. Um, I'm not a, I don't like to overshare a whole lot on this front. As she gets older, there'll be more details that we need to talk about and we'll have those conversations. Um, you know, she's aware that he went missing from school. She attends that same school. Uh, we've had a lot of conversations about that. We talk a lot about safety, uh, and, you know, dealing with parents or, you know, maybe people, not just people you don't know, but people you do know and, you know, situations that maybe you need to try to avoid or, or let people know about. So I think just steering her in a direction that makes it so she's not afraid of uh, what's happened, but is educated uh, as much as possible. And then, like I said, I just don't overshare a lot of the details. We, but we do, I, I've addressed every question that she's brought to my attention with the truth. Um, and it's just sometimes a more, uh, like I say, a limited version of it, but just a version that makes more sense to her based on where she's at with her age and, you know, what she can process. But we're, coming up on 12 this year and the, the questions get a little bit more involved and a little bit more, uh, not necessarily difficult, but, uh, you know, they're, they're getting more context, I guess, uh, coming with the answers are, uh, coming with the questions nowadays. Do you ever think we'd be here talking about Chiron still missing 10 years later? Well, I never thought I'd be having a conversation about him being missing period. Uh, let alone, you know, having conversations with people towards the beginning and, and now, no, I mean, absolutely not. I figured when it did happen after you get over the, it happened type of feeling and situation that it was going to be resolved quickly. And yeah, not anything I thought I'd be doing 10 years after the fact. Yeah. How, how has the situation uh, changed you or has it changed you and your outlook on, on life and surroundings? I think it's changed a lot of who we are and what we do. Um, I know we did some volunteering before and we were, you know, a little active in the community and I think we're pretty heavily, at least as much as we can now. Uh, it's really opened my eyes with a different purpose, I think, around reaching out and helping others a lot more so than, than maybe you normally would. Um, it's got my consciousness tied in a lot more to um, when I'm talking to people, really thinking about what's happening on their side of the, of the fence or their side of the table. Uh, I know, you know, it's really easy to judge people based on your experience, but, you know, not knowing what people have gone through, it really has given me perspective about patience and understanding uh, when maybe something doesn't go your way or you have a bad interaction with somebody really putting yourself in their shoes, whereas I think before, maybe not as much. Uh, but it's, I think it's definitely, it's changes for the better, I think. Um, I, and I don't know. It's, uh, it's kind of hard to describe, but I, I definitely, I, I think we are the same people who we were to a degree, uh, but it's definitely had an impact. And like I said, I think it's been a good impact on how we've evolved 
uh, with this. It's definitely taught us a lot about perseverance, a lot about belief, um, a lot about fear of the unknown and how to deal with that. Uh, and uh, we've had a lot of, uh, you know, life happens along the way. So I think one of the main lessons we've picked up as well is that life continues to move even though you're kind of stuck in this situation that you want to get resolved and it's not resolving itself. So living with everybody else through their experiences, as we continue to live ours, uh, I think that's changed us a lot as well. Mm -hmm. The question that uh, I've asked you and many other people have asked you repeatedly over the years is, what do you think happened to Chiron? And has that answer changed? No, it's still the same. It's still the same. I think he was taken from school. I don't think he's been in the area. I think he's out of the area somewhere. I think he's with somebody else. Um, and I, I, I still will, will repeat that we don't have enough information to really tell us you know, whether he's alive or not. And there's really nothing conclusive in either direction. So we continue to believe that he's out there and we continue to believe that he needs to be found without anything more conclusive coming to the table at this point. A lot of those original investigators, detectives, even prosecutors have, have now retired or, or gone on to move to do different things. How, do you fear at all that this case will be on a back shelf somewhat or be, or be forgotten about as new people come in and, and maybe aren't aware of it? Um, no, honestly, I don't. Um, we've already had several transitions in the case. Um, it does kind of slow things down a little bit uh, to get people ramped up uh, and back on kind of the directions that we have before. But I think that the new sets of eyes are fantastic. Um, I think that law enforcement generally, I mean, there's a lot of organizations involved. So I'm just going to throw a blanket statement that law enforcement agencies, they haven't given up. Um, I think they've had a lot of opportunity to scale back, step back, maybe do less. And, and as, far as, I, as far as I know, that hasn't happened. Um, so we're very thankful that they're still on it the way that they are, that they do, you know, what they do and, um, the transitions have been good. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it does, I think it does take some time to get back up to speed, but I definitely think that the, like I said, the fresh perspective, fresh set of eyes coming in oftentimes yields more, uh, tips or leads or directions that maybe haven't been explored, uh, which I think is helpful at this point. We need as many different directions as we can. Um, to, to continue to, you know, go through this case. And it's exactly what they're doing. So, uh, yeah, maybe in a way, I, I think there's, you know, some of that knowledge you lose as it gets, you know, exchanged uh, person to person. Uh, I'm sure, I don't know if you've, you've been out there, but they've got a, you know, they used to have a room with a wall of bookcases full of information just on his case. There's no way someone new coming in is going to know all that information, you know, in all those notebooks. So yeah, you might lose a little bit there, but I think what's gained in fresh perspective is, is an advantage for uh, the case as well. So yeah, maybe a little bit of a disadvantage, but advantages in other ways. Yeah. Uh, recently, I had a chance to kind of go back and, and look through all my files and, and look at some video from that, those first few weeks when there was kind of a frenzy of activity, a lot of searches, and just a lot of people participating in this effort. Um, from your perspective, I mean, is there anything that you would look back and you would change or you, you think maybe I should have done something different or asked for something different to be done in those early stages? Um, honestly, I don't know. Um, it, it's very easy to be critical. Um, I, I can remember in the moment that I was just thankful that we had the volume of resources that we had. And I think if you were to look back, that could have been a good thing for us. It could have been a bad thing for us. Like I said, I think there are probably advantages and disadvantages. Um, but, uh, you know, given at that particular time, you know, you, you could have 10 people show up an investigator. You could have 200. I'm sure you, everyone would say they'd feel better if they had 200 there uh, investigating and pursuing as hard as they were. So um, I can't really say that I would do it differently. Uh, you know, there, there might be the difference between what might have been more effective versus might, what might have meant, what might have helped us feel better. <laughs> so, you know, could it, could it have been too many people too fast and maybe overrunning some stuff? Yeah, you could make that judgment based on what we know now, maybe. But at the same time, like I said, I feel good today and I felt good then at the response that we had from so many organizations and so many people. I don't really know how you say that, well, we don't, we didn't want that. <laughs> so it's, I, I think it, it's really hard to identify what could have been done differently because something else would have not have been done that probably was. 
and probably felt necessary at the time. So um, I don't know, it's probably a little bit of an evasive answer to your question, but um, it, you know, I, I don't know that I have any criticisms that I would say, I wish this would have been done differently. The only thing I would say is that I wish he was found. There are a lot of people that feel a deep connection to this case. Uh, there are also some new people to our community who maybe have not even heard about this. What would your message be to the community, both to those people who, who feel a deep connection and want to find Kyron and those people who, who aren't aware of this situation? Yeah, well, we, we continue, we have flyers posted um, that are shareable, obviously on social media, and I would continue to encourage everyone to share it when they can. Um, and not necessarily to share it just around like, you know, the significant dates that come up, like June 4th is the day he went missing, for example. And I think it's awesome that everybody shares flyers on June 4th. I think when it's helpful is when uh, we're in months where people are out and about quite a bit. I think it's important to share throughout those months so that people are reminded and have his likeness kind of in the forefront of their minds when they're out camping or traveling to, to other places. Uh, I think it's helpful to have just kind of that steady flow of uh, his likeness getting out there. It's just a, you know, a subtle reminder and, and to get that in front of people. Um, the other thing I like to remind people of too is he, I mean, he's going to be 18 this year. So that cute little picture of him with the glasses at seven years old, a, a, as much as it's my sentimental favorite, that's not what he looks like anymore. So, um, you know, we occasionally get tips for, you know, people saying that, you know, we saw this, this little boy who looks like this and I'm like, yep. And, and my heart's right there with you. Uh, but he's not a little boy anymore. He's a young man. He's probably, you know, somewhere around six feet tall ish and he's got a different face and he may not be wearing glasses. And, you know, so a lot of those traits that I think um, a lot of people find endearing about that original photo and probably what brought a lot of people to connect with this case um, are, are still there. I would keep those at heart, but just remember that he looks different and to, to be thinking about that, you know, when, when people are out looking, but yeah, sharing via social media, is still a very relevant activity. Um, flyers you can download and print and post if you go places. So if you go on vacation, posting flyers here and there, that's helpful. There's still um, a lot of things like that that are very relevant to what we need to do today.